All right, so now let's talk about how meiosis happens in human males and females. Because, well, in human males it proceeds normally, and in females it's just wackadoodle. All right, so in males, meiosis proceeds normally. Um, it happens within the testes of the male. The testy is the actual organ. Uh, the testicle is the organ with the uh, skin and other layers of tissue that surround it. We'll talk about that next time in uh, when we talk about reproduction. Within the testes, there are these series of tubes called seminiferous tubules, and within those, we have a layer of cells that are diploid cells that just sit there and do mitosis to create cells that are going to do meiosis and create sperm. So these do mitosis um, and they create a new diploid cell and then that cell starts meiosis. So we have this diploid cell 2M, that's called a primary spermatocyte. It does the first phase of meiosis and separates the homologous chromosomes, creating two secondary spermocytes that are haploid. You remember haploid means half the number of chromosomes. So we started off with 2N or 46 in the human we end up after meiosis one with two cells that each have 23 chromosomes. And then each of those undergoes meiosis two, creates four cells that we call spermatids, and then those um, actually exit the seminiferous tubules before they're fully developed. And then they have a big long journey uh, that will uh, end up with them taking on this mature sperm shape and I know that we've always learned that you know sperm are then like swimming directly to the egg and they're not they swim in circles they swim sideways they, they're some of them are not really that good at it okay anyway we'll come back to the sperm later uh so in the human male everything produce starts proceeds normally, we start off with one cell, we end up with four haploid cells. Boom, easy, no problem. And then we get to the human female. Now, with females of many, many animal species, and actually I keep saying the, the human female, this is the same process in all mammals, not necessarily all animals, but all mammals. Um, the, with animals the and, and plants the egg is going to provide most of the nutrition to the developing embryo and so the egg needs to be a much bigger cell than the sperm all the sperm has to do is deliver a nucleus it just has to move a nucleus from the male to the egg that's all the egg has to provide enough nutrition for the embryo to be able to develop until it can get nutrition from somewhere else. In the human, this is going to be when the uh, what's called a blastocyst embeds in the wall of the uterus and can start getting nutrition from the mother. So we start off with a diploid cell this is actually developed in the embryo before the female is born. So the, the ovary of the human female has about 2 million, what we call um, primary oocytes that are diploid cells and they just wait uh, and they just sit there. They've done prophase, they've done crossing over and then they're just gonna wait in prophase one. At puberty, some of them each month start the process of finishing meiosis. Only one, theoretically, finishes meiosis completely. Okay, So uh, we start off with a primary oocyte and then after completing meiosis one, the cytoplasm is not evenly shared between the two cells. All the cytoplasm goes to one cell and the other cell gets basically a, a plasma membrane and a nucleus, and that's it. Now that cell can't survive. It doesn't have all the stuff a cell needs to be a cell. So it's gonna get reabsorbed by the ovary. It's called a polar body. 
So what we've created is one secondary oocyte, this haploid cell, a really big oocyte, and a polar body. Then that secondary oocyte is going to go and if it gets fertilized, it will then complete meiosis too. I know it's really confusing and complicated. When it does that, it's going to eject the second nucleus and create a second polar body. All of the cytoplasm from this first primary oocyte remains in this mature egg that's finished meiosis too. So in the male, we start with one cell, we end up four cells, one diploid cell, four haploid cells, easy peasy, no problem. In the human female, we start off with one diploid cell, we end up with one haploid cell and two polar bodies. Why? In order to produce one cell that is big enough to create a blastocyst, which is this ball of cells that uh, is needed to create an embryo. All right, so what's happening in the, all of this is happening inside the ovary um, and inside a thing called a follicle, which is a multicellular structure. Um, so all these little dots, these are all cells surrounding the oocyte. Some of these cells get released at ovulation uh, from the ovary with the oocyte. So the oocyte actually gets released with this protective layer of other cells. And then it travels down the fallopian tube and usually gets fertilized actually in the fallopian tube. And then it does mitosis, 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 as it makes its way down into the uterus and then implants in the uterus. The follicle, all of these cells from the follicle that didn't get released with the oocyte, they stick around in the follicle and they uh, change shape and they take on this look, this structure. They become something we call a corpus luteum they produce the hormones that will support the development of the pregnancy for about three months until the uh, placenta and the uh, fetus start to produce their own hormones, okay? So that is how it all happens in the human male and female. All right, I've got one more quick section where we're gonna talk about what happens if meiosis doesn't proceed normally.